right guys, welcome back to the next video. This is gonna be put into the playlist for help topics for those of you who are new sailors. This will be focused for you guys as you get started in your new career, new sailors on ships. So before anybody watches this video, that's who it's gonna be targeted for. Those of you who are new to the industry, maybe you're going on your first ship looking for some self-help uh, tips. And in this video, I'm gonna include those suggestions for you to get to help you a little bit on your first trip and how to prepare what to bring with you on the ship all right guys so let's get started um so you're a new sailor you're starting a new career maybe you're young and you're just getting started in the industry or maybe you're changing careers and going to your first ship maybe and you have a question in your head what do i need to bring you don't know it's a little bit daunting possible so I'm gonna give you some tips in this video. I'll try to keep it as limited and short as possible, not to go too long, <clears throat> but this is what I do. I'm going by my experience and I think it will translate to you and help you. Now keeping in mind, everything I say in this video doesn't have to be exact. <clears throat> you can change it to fit to your needs, suit your needs, and everybody likes different things with them to be comfortable, etc., etc. So. These are merely suggestions to get you. I'm gonna talk about basically the basic things that I think you really should bring, and then you can bring less or more depending on what you want to have with you. Bearing in mind that, you know, you're gonna be working on a ship away from home, but you still will have chances to get things as you hit ports. So let's jump right into it. Uh, the first and most important thing, obviously when you go work on a ship, is you wanna bring all your pertinent documents with you. I keep a little zip up portfolio. And again, you can do whatever you want. You can keep these things however you wanna organize them. But don't forget to bring your documents because the first thing you're gonna do on any ship when you first get there, you're gonna generally go down to the office, the mate's office or wherever the captain's office and you're gonna sign on. They'll give you paperwork that you have to fill out and they're gonna ask you for your documents, your shipping papers, etc. cetera. Um, these documents uh, include, but are not limited to, your passport, your TWIC card, which you're gonna have all these things before you get started in the industry anyway. You're gonna have to get these documents, but your TWIC card, that's a transportation worker's identification credential. It's a card, you're gonna have it by now. Keep all these things together, I suggest, in one place, like I said, I use a zip up portfolio. That way I don't have things all over the place. Oh, I, I, where's this document? Here's my passport, but I gotta find my, no. Make it easy for yourself. Put them all in one place, whatever you like for, you know, a storage vehicle, <clears throat> but your TWIC. Uh, then you're gonna have a Merchant Mariner credential. You're gonna show that. Uh, a shot record card, possibly the yellow card, CDC. We all have those uh, bearing records of all your shots because different parts of the world you travel to, you, We'll need different inoculations possible or not, but you need to keep that with you. You'll have a little medical certification card, which are good for two years. Generally in the back of your merchant credential, you'll see a little plastic pocket inside the book. And generally that's what that's for. That's why they put that there. You keep your little medical cert card inside of there. Um, things like that. You just keep all those things together. Number one, make sure you have those as you're packing. The reason I thought about making this video today is because I'm going to a, a new ship starting two more days and I'm going to be packing pretty much today, getting ready. And as I pack, I generally find out ah, a couple of things that I need to get that I had on my last ship, but I ran out of, so I want to replenish myself. So after you have all your documents, number one important again, uh, that's very, very important. Don't mess yourself up by not remembering to bring those. Okay, now when you go on your ship, one thing to think about is find out ahead of time where, like, after you sail a while, you're going to kind of know ships, where they go, and what to expect. But as far as clothing, what you're going to need to bring, find out where, if you don't know, where the ship is going to go. Um, I, if you guys follow the channel, always go on container ships over to the Northern European Rhine, which is what I'm doing this time. However, with a different company, but different times of the year, obviously that's cold. <clears throat> Northern Europe can be very cold and unforgiving in the winter months 
as can United States uh, ports. So I'm going over there again. It's summertime. It's summertime in USA. I don't need cold gear. And the reason I make a, another important point out of this, and I'm mentioning it early in the video, is because when you start packing winter gear, I have like a winter jacket I'll bring, and I highly recommend insulated coveralls, a one-piece coverall suit. Uh, Walls is a big brand. You can buy those at Walmart or many other stores. Uh, Carhartt. Um, the Walls are a little less expensive than Carhartt, I believe, because it's just a brand. Uh, I have had no problem with my Walls one-piece coveralls. I've had them for many years, and they keep me warm in the freezing cold uh, Northern Europe. I don't have any problem with those, especially for you guys working on deck. You'll be out in the elements. Um, if it's going to be cold where you're going, definitely bring uh, a winter jacket, but I recommend a one piece winter coveralls. And I use, like I said, the walls brand. Never had a problem with them. I've had mine at least six or seven years and I don't use them every day because I'm out in the deck department. But they keep me really, really, really warm and they're heavily constructed. They're not going to fall apart on you in a month or two. You're going to be happy with it and it's very comfortable. So find out where you're going. That will make it so much easier what to bring. Because, uh, you know, the number one thing is your documents and what you need to wear for work. So if you're going to be only in warm climates, this time it's summer. Like I said, I'm only going to bring a hoodie. And the reason I mentioned this is, yeah, you're going to need what you need. You don't want to, it's better to have more than what you need than not enough. I always say it's better to have something that you don't need and then you'll have it if you do need it than to not have something and, you know, need it. So <clears throat> make sure that you pack accordingly for the weather. And like I'm saying, uh, those kind of things, winter gear can really fill up a suitcase quickly. So if you don't need it, you don't need to bring it. Don't fill your suitcase 50% with something that you don't need because then uh, you're taking away space that could be used to bring some other things. Um, so bring working gear, which will include you can your pants, uh, t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts. Bring a couple of long sleeves as well. You never know when you're gonna be in a cool area. Um, <clears throat> if it's not gonna be a really cold area, bring a hoodie or something or a light work jacket. Um, a lot of the ships have rain gear. But if you want to bring that as well, especially for you guys on deck, that's always a good idea. However, like I said, most ships have that. And before I go even further in this video, keep in mind guys, sometimes it's better not to overpack because you're going to be in ports, especially on the Northern European run. The crossing of the Atlantic Ocean is generally nine days or so. You're going to be able to go to Walmart when you get on the ship. You're going to be able to get, you're going to have opportunities to get things that you may have forgot or run out of, or whoops, I forgot to bring a long sleeve shirt. You go to Walmart and you grab one. It's not a big, big thing, but you just want to have the initial things you need to get started. <clears throat> so bring pants, shirts, maybe a long sleeve shirt or two, uh, some socks, things that are easy to overlook. Bring socks that are working socks. Um, and all the things like that you need. Generally ships, you're gonna need a pair of safety shoes. I use composite toe safety shoes. Uh, I actually just bought a new pair yesterday, I needed a new pair. So you're gonna need safety shoes. A lot of the companies will give you money towards that. Uh, the Merck ships give you $125 a year. So say you go out and buy $150 work boots, you give the receipt to the captain and you'll be reimbursed $125 for the year. So that's a good thing. So, um, a lot of people bring other things that they like, um, winter hats, you know, uh, if you think you're going to need it. Like I said, check where the ship is going, find out. Um, and then another thing that's really, really important for a lot of you, I fortunately, thank God, I don't right now need any medications. I'm out on prescription medications. I've never needed to be, knock on wood. I hope I keep it that way. Uh, if you need medicines, bring those and declare it when you get on the ship. Um, generally, you tell them that if you have prescription medications. And rule of thumb is you need to bring, even if you're not gonna be on the ship that long, six month supply. That's just in case. Uh, generally, you need to bring a six month supply of that and get that in advance. So don't forget your medications. Now here's some other things that, uh, those are the things you need, need, need. Uh, now, in addition to that, what I bring, 
I'm just giving you guys some pointers. Like I said, this video is geared to new sailors, mostly. And over the years, I've just gotten better at knowing what to bring. Uh, I know exactly what I'm gonna need from, and a lot of times I messed up too. Found myself having to go to the store a lot. But what I'll bring in addition to these important things that I've already mentioned is um, I bring vitamins. You know, bring vitamins, you know. A lot of times in the engine room, you know, we don't get out to the sun all the time, like the deck department. I take vitamin D for that purpose. I bring vitamin C. I, I take that every morning. Um, iron, different things. Uh, you could bring multivitamin. Now, this is if, if you guys want to use these things. I recommend it, but it's not needed, but uh, just a recommendation. Um, I bring a lot of things. Highly recommend. This is a good idea. Um, some cough drops cough medicine. I hardly ever get sick. But what if I do in the middle of the ocean? I can go on the ship. They have a little hospital set up. Not a doctor, but you can get medications for certain things. But it's better to have some of these things just in your room. Things that you might, you're not going to find on the ship. I like to bring some cough drops, cough medicine. I bring something for headaches. And you can get yourself a little bag and keep all these things in, like your bathroom bag. You know, your toiletries, etc. And... I bring all these things. I bring some, uh, you know, pain cream. If you get a sore, you know, um, I bring stuff like that. Uh, I bring an extra or two pair. They're $2 at Walmart. Uh, I think 54 inch. A lot of work boots, you use a 54 inch lace. So I bring two extra pair. Like I said, they were $2 each, $4. If I break a shoelace uh, on my work boots, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to tape up or do something stupid like some people do because I spent $2 and I put it in my bag. Uh, I highly recommend a, a, a sewing kit, just something simple, a sewing kit. If you get a little rip or something in a shirt and you, you know, you're not gonna be to the port for a few more days, bring a little sewing kit. Um, so I bring things like that. So basically medicines, uh, you know, over the counter kind of stuff, not prescription, but, um. Whatever you think, you know, prepare. If you get a cold or sore muscle or a headache, bring some things for that. Uh, some Tums. Maybe you'll eat some spicy food on the ship and have a little indigestion. So bring a little thing of those. Just think about things like that. Go to Walmart, look in the, you know, around the pharmacy. Usually you'll find these things. Uh, bring some shampoo. And ships generally have a little small store which will carry things like shampoo, toothpaste, um, the basics like that, but bring it with you. Um, some shampoo, toothbrush, toothpaste, um, if you use a shaver, shaving cream, electric shaver, whatever you use. Now keep in mind a lot of ships are, the ones I work on are always built overseas, they're 220. I'm speaking to you guys in USA now, uh, 220 volts. So generally those ships always have a transformer in the room. A lot of your things, like your computer and all, you can plug in. You just need an adapter for the 220 plug, but they can run off dual voltage. But a lot of times, um, um, hair trimmers, I find a lot of them in the USA are only 110 volt. So you need to run that off your transformer. So just keep in mind, some things may be on the ship powered with 220 volts, but they will have a transformer. So maybe bring an adapter a 220, you know, the two prong plug and then the USA style plug. Uh, that's always a nice thing to have too. Um, generally, what sailors do for entertainment, there's usually a lounge and movies and things like that. But we load our computers up with music and everything that we enjoy watching. Uh, every sailor I know has hard drives, portable. I'm talking about the external hard drives. They bring those. Um, to see and they watch TV series, things like that, movies, and you're gonna <laughs> be able to share with a lot of people on the ship, you know, and a lot of people, they exchange hard drives. Hey, can you give me this or that or this movie? And sure, and then you have it like that too. So you'll find that, that's a really nice addition, but bring some something to watch uh, for yourself. Um, now these are just some things that I bring. Um, now, also you're gonna need to, when you go to the ports, you might wanna get off the ship. So kind of what you're gonna wear to the ship, you can use for going to shore too. A pair of regular shoes, uh, some clothes like you would wear to go out somewhere. Bring a, a pair or two of those as well. 
Um, me, I bring, for washing my clothes, uh, Tide Pods, because I like to use them. Ships generally have a detergent, but it's some powder, and I generally don't like it. So I bring, this is again, not a need, but something that I like. So I bring a, a bag of Tide Pods with me, um, and I use those. That way I have a little bit of the things that I like to use at home with me. Um, I also bring, and again, this is not a need, but I bring my own bed sheet and pillow. I like to be comfortable, so I bring my own sheet and pillow. Um, and again, this is something else you don't have to bring to the ship. You can get it when you go to Walmart. But uh, uh, another thing that you might want to bring is some, uh, some photos, you know, for your loved ones, your family members, uh, things, your dog, whatever they make. You can buy them at Walmart. They're a little plastic four by six photo or for five by seven photo, which I use. Um, they're little plastic sleeves. They're very cheap and they have magnets on the back. And generally the bulkheads, which is the wall on ships are magnetic. I, I haven't been on one that wasn't for years. And then you just stick it right on the wall. You know, you don't have to tape anything. You don't need a picture frame because you wouldn't want that on ships because they roll around. So you just magnetically can stick them right to your bulkhead. And that's a very nice thing to have. Um, so these are just the things that I bring on the ship. Um, and once again, find out where your ship is gonna go, what the weather's gonna be like. You may or may not need to bring a whole ton of winter gear. Like I said, I'm gonna bring a hoodie this time. It's summertime in Europe. I'm not, I've been there a million times in summer. I'm not gonna worry about being really, really cold. So I'll bring a hoodie in case it's a little chilly one night and I have to go outside. I don't anticipate needing more than that, but if you don't need cold weather gear, that stuff takes up a lot of space in your bag. But yeah, don't forget your work boots though. You need those safety toe work boots. And if you buy a new pair, keep the receipt because maybe the ship you're going to will reimburse you or at least partial reimbursement for that. So keep your receipt just in case. Um, a lot of ships, uh, when you go to get your pay, you can have a direct deposit. So you might want to bring a blank check, a voided blank check. Now this isn't every ship, but the ones I've always worked on, and this is just the first time. Once you are already in the system, you don't have to do it again. Just the first time. Uh, a lot of times I'll ask you for a blank voided check, uh, so they can get you set up for your direct deposit and all that. So just things like that. But I always bring my laptop too, with some entertainment on there, whatever I want, and my hard drives. And that's really about it, guys. Um, I always bring a pair of sunglasses if I have to go outside, but I do I do that anyway. Um, just think about some things that you use at home that might make you comfortable. Especially focus on things like bathroom things. Get a bathroom bag, a zip-up bag, I use that. <clears throat> and just think of uh, any kind of possible you know, I might get a headache, a cold. I'm really reiterating this because it's kind of important. Bring these things, you know. Uh, you get a headache, oops, I don't have anything. I, you know, and then you'll ask somebody else. I'm sure you'll find it, but it's just nice to have it. It's a, it adds a, like, a, like a comfort that you know you have what you need, just like you do at home. And once again, you can always get off the ship and go and get things in the store. That's generally not a problem, especially post COVID now. We don't have any problems to get off the ship. Whereas before, two years ago, it was a thing. We couldn't get off the ship. So these are just some uh, things <clears throat> to keep in mind. And of course, you bring your phone with you. Um, I use T-Mobile. This is just a side subject. I use T-Mobile because their plans uh, include, like my plan just includes, it's not an add-on for me, uh, international roaming. Um, I highly recommend it. I mean, other people on the ship that I, I see them, they have phone service, but they have to pay extra per day if they're in a foreign port for internet. I don't have to, I use T-Mobile. And this is merely a suggestion, guys. Um, so I have, every time I go in port, I have uh, unlimited data. It's not 5K speed, but it's good enough to use WhatsApp to make uh, video phone calls or to go on the web or to do whatever I need to do, check the status of my bills, things like that. Which leads me into another thing. <clears throat> if you, uh, especially if you're alone or you have some bills and stuff, you might want to get them set up, uh, you know, generally electric, all these different bills that you have, uh, you know, water bill with your city or whatever. 
you go on their websites and there's always an option to set up auto pay where every month it will be automatically paid from your bank account which you set up one time for me uh, I'm in the house alone here so every month my electric bill my whatever gets paid automatically I don't have to even think about it it just happens um, and you can always check to make sure those things go through but I have never had a problem because I use auto pay through <clears throat> my uh, my bank and I go on the websites you know for I live in Virginia so I set up through the website of the service to have it pay automatically that's something else you might want to think about too to make it a little easier for you you don't have to go online and try to pay bills you can just have it auto pay if you choose that's all preference so these are just some uh, suggestions guys I hope this is helpful to a lot of you guys don't worry about it you know if you forget something like I say you'll be able to get off the ship and go get it but the main things are your documents if you have prescription medicines you need bring a six-month supply you need to bring this in your documents uh, bring whatever working clothes you're gonna need cool weather you know hot weather or both try to find out ahead of time where your ships gonna go bring the appropriate clothing uh, working pants I generally bring like four pair that's just me some t-shirts whatever socks underwear and my work shoes safety shoes if you wear hats bring your hats some sunglasses uh, if you bring glasses if you use glasses bring those don't forget to bring those um, some people use just glasses for reading um, sometimes at night I use right here um, my room's not real bright at night and I see small print I'll just use these just to magnify I don't have prescription glasses uh, so far I pass my eye test every time but I bring a pair of these or or, well more than one pair I usually bring about three of them just in case I break them and I got this at the dollar store so I buy maybe three pair and put them in my bag I got the the most the weakest ones right here I think they're 1.0 they go up to I believe 3.5 the dollar store so at night if I'm reading something in my room and it's not real lit I don't have any problem to see it I don't have to struggle with my eyes um, <clears throat> so but guys, these are just some pointers. I hope this was a little bit helpful for you guys. And these are just recommendations and you know what you want. A lot of people also, one other thing, maybe bring a water bottle. You don't have to, but you bring those insulated water bottles that keep stuff cold or hot for 12 hours or more, some of them. Um, you can get them anywhere, Walmart, <clears throat> for a good price. Probably under $20, you can get a nice one. And it will, if you just want to have water with you, if you're going to work on deck or somewhere and you just want to carry it with you. A lot of guys do that. Um, you can just have that with you as well. Um, that's a good thing to bring too. So just stop and think a little bit. Things that you're going to make you comfortable. And like I said, mainly go near the pharmacy and Walmart and just get some vitamins, whatever you want. Things for a headache if you get a cold. I'm just saying this again because it's really important. I bring band-aids, I bring, you know, everything, extra shoelaces, you know, whatever, anything I can anticipate, um, some, uh, like hand lotion or something, if your hands get dry, I like my own shampoo, um, the ships generally have some of that too, if you want to get it, but I bring what I want, <clears throat> you know, for me, so, anyway guys, I'm going to sign off this time. I hope this was helpful. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I'll be making more videos real soon. I'm not able to post generally until I get home off the ship. I edit the videos on the ship and post them when I get home. <clears throat> generally, the internet or the Wi-Fi on board is not enough to post videos up on YouTube because they're larger size files than videos. So I post when I get home, but I will be making some new videos. I uh, appreciate it if you guys subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.